Welcome to the home of Sunseeker International here in Poole, Dorset, where I am about to become one of the first journalists in the world to test this boat, the new Sunseeker Superhawk 55. And the reason I am quite so excited about that is because the Superhawk name is one of the great iconic badges in the motorboating history. Superhawks have featured in numerous James Bond films and with their long, sleek, sporty looks and prodigious offshore performance, they are the boats that help build Sunseeker into the brand it is today. But remarkably, since 2009, there has not been a Superhawk model in the Sunseeker range since the very last Superhawk 43 came off the production line behind me here. Now, the reason for that is partly because tastes have changed since the financial crisis in 2008. There wasn't quite the same demand for those out and out performance boats, but also because people's requirements have changed a little bit. And it's a struggle to know exactly what a modern Superhawk should be like. So a little bit like Land Rover wrestled with how to replace a family favorite like the Defender. So Sunseeker have gone through their own process of trying to work out exactly what a modern Superhawk should be. And they went through several different iterations before settling on this, the Superhawk 55. Now, what they say is that it's not an exact direct replacement for a Superhawk. It is a modern interpretation that has the same ethos and spirit of the Superhawk range, but in a modern reinterpretation of what that means. And what we are going to do is take it out to sea, put it through all its paces, tell you exactly what it can do in terms of performance, in terms of sea keeping and handling and fuel efficiency, but also to show you all the clever little details and innovations that have never before seen on a Sunseeker model. So we're going to get going. Let's not waste any more time. My name is Hugo Andre. You are watching Motorboat and Yachting. Let's go boating. start with a few basics about the boat itself because it's considerably bigger than the Superhawks of old. This particular boat is just over 56 foot long, 16 foot wide, it weighs around 26 tonnes and it's powered by a pair of Volvo Penta IPS 950 engines of 725 horsepower each. The cost for this boat starts at £1,395,000 XVAT X Factory. Now, those engines, I think, give us a little bit of a clue about the boat, because although they are very efficient and therefore perform well, in terms of the absolute power and performance, it's not like the old surface drives that they used to have. This is more about refinement, comfort, and fuel efficiency. But hopefully, we'll find out more about that when we actually get to drive the boat. This is the moment I have been waiting for. This is when we finally get to drive the new Superhawk 55. It's been a long time coming, but now let's give it a go and see how she goes. We've got those twin IPS 950 engines, 725 horsepower each. Just put them into gear. It's so smooth you barely notice it going in. Now let's increase the throttle. Oh, there come the superchargers. You can hear that distinctive whine. And then the turbochargers starting to whistle in now at 2,000 RPM. We're already doing 20 knots. We're on the plane. Still accelerating hard. We're up to 30 knots now. Still going. 2,500 RPM. Just coming up. 35. 36. 37. 38 knots! Now that is pretty good going for a boat of this size. That's fantastic. But let's see how she goes into a corner. We'll try going to port first and see how it goes. Oh yes, look at that lead! Actually, you have to look down under the hard top to make sure 
sure you can see, see where you're going. But that is really nice responsive steering. Level it up, pick up the speed again. We didn't even lose much speed. It's maybe dropped down to 33, 34 knots, but straight away we're back up to 36, 37. Let's try the same to starboard. Good look round. Put it in. And again, right on its shoulder. Plenty of lean. A couple of seagulls just coming off the water. And again, got to get right down to see where we're going. That's how far it leans over. Straighten up. few waves out here, you can feel a little bit of shuddering through the hull, but frankly, when you're going 37 knots, that's not entirely surprising. And let's ease off and take a look at fuel consumption figures. So we'll take it down to 25 knots. So there we go, 25 knots, we're doing 2,000 RPM and burning 190 litres of fuel. So when you want to take it a little bit more relaxed, that's 190 litres combined for both engines. Which is really not too bad and it's quite nice and quiet at this speed too. Because of those IPS drives, it tends to keep the noise very nicely contained. But what is nice is that you've got the breeze coming in between the gap between the hard top up here and the windscreen in front of me. But then when I sit myself down, I'm tucked right down out of the airflow. You've still got a pretty good view over the bow. There is a little bit of a hump. The cushions on that sun pile actually inflate a little bit. But you can see enough either side of it. And if you want a better view, just fold up that bolster lean back and take it all in. Try another turn to starboard. That's a pretty tight turning circle again. It's never going to be sports boat quick because we're talking about a 56 foot boat here weighing over 20 tonnes so it's not going to be like a 30 foot sports boat, but you have got nicely responsive steering, You've got enough performance, there's always a bit of extra acceleration when I put that throttle down again, pick the speed up again, it does respond, and it's still a fun, entertaining boat to drive. You can throw it about a bit, put that hull to use. I can't kid myself that it's like a 50 knot Super Hawk of old. It's just a much bigger boat than that in every sense of the word. But it's still an entertaining drive. It's not some big, ponderous day boat that is purely about entertainment on board. There is still fun to be had from pushing on, using that performance, and making the most of that classic Sunseeker hull design. There are a lot of clever features going on here at the stern. There is a hydraulic bathing platform. Now that will take up to 300 kilograms, so that's plenty big enough to store a jet ski on there. We've also got a very clever little storage garage under here. Now this isn't the main garage, that's further down, but we'll show you that in a minute. But under this section of the sunbed here, you've got a really handy and very long locker where you can put a CBOB either side, you can put charging stations in here, or if you wanted to put folding bicycles or inflatable SUPs, really handy to have that. They will just slide straight in there and then close it all up and keep them nice and safe and secure inside there. But then the real pièce de résistance is under here, and I'm probably going to have to step off this in order to demonstrate that. But once you've actually lowered the platform 
And you can see the clever way that it's not just the platform, the whole of that transom is lowering into the water, which creates steps down from the cockpit onto the platform itself. Wow, that's still going. That's a long way up <laughs> there. That's probably far enough, I would think. But now you can see we've got steps coming down onto the platform, and here is the garage itself. And the roller's here, that hinges down, and then you can fit a Williams Mini Jet 280 in there. So it's a proper toy cupboard. You've got a Mini Jet, you've got a jet ski, and you've got a couple of sea bobs all tucked away in the stern here. One of the clever things about the way they've designed this boat is that the cockpit uses the full beam of the actual hull. So there are no side decks down either side in, eating into the space. You've got the full width to enjoy. And in order to make the most of that, they come up with quite a clever way of configuring the furniture. So these corner units here, they can slide on track. So at the moment, it's set all the way out here. So you've got the maximum space to move through the boat. But also, if you want to slide it in, you just push that button down, the whole seat slides in and then clicks into various different places along the way. And in the same way, the table itself is set up to make the most of that. So if I release it down here, it spins around, it goes up and down, and then it also opens up. So if I open that up, push it across and then you've got really nice intimate seating all the way around the table you can bring the other corner in too and you can use the whole space now the sun pad is equally innovative in that respect because at the moment we've got it in sun pad mode but you'll notice that the middle cushions also lift up so when you want to sit at the table all of these flip up and then you've got a really comfortable backrest here. You can sit fully supported, but equally, as well as having a flat sunbed, you can lift them up the other way, like this. And then you've got a really nice headrest so you can chill out and lie facing out the back of the boat. So, very versatile cockpit area. You've got sunbathing space, you've got eating space, and you can put them all the way back and then make the most of the track through the boat so you're not having to squeeze past. And the other benefit of pulling them in here is you've also got some lockers behind the corner units, so you've got a bit of extra storage you can get into down there. Moving forward from the rear seating area, there's a big wet bar directly behind the helm seats, and it's really well equipped. So on this one, we've got a Kenyan grill. Under here, there's a big sink with a pull-up tap. Over on this side, we have a ice maker. And then this is just storage, so not too much going on in there. We see we've got some cleaning gear in there at the, at the moment. And then on this side, there is a fridge. Now, sadly, this particular boat doesn't have probably the coolest feature of the wet bar, which is actually a high-low television. But if you spec it, you can have a television that comes out of there. It's a weatherproof TV. You can sit in the cockpit and watch sport or movie in the, of an evening or whatever you like. We've also got a couple of rather handy draining lockers. Now, these, I think, are probably designed principally to be used as wine coolers. You can pack them full of ice, put your champagne bottles in there. They'll stay nice and cool and there is a little drain in the bottom of them, so that will just run through to the bilges as the ice melts. And moving forward from the wet bar, there is another little bit of storage under this side. You can't have enough storage on a boat, you just can't have too much, that's for sure. And then the helm seats, three helm seats, they're on a slightly raised platform, so that gives you a bit of a better view overhead, and you certainly need that, because I have noticed when you're driving it, that the danger is that if you're a bit too low, that windscreen is pretty much in your eye line on the horizon. But by raising it up a bit, you get a view over when you stand. The seats have got bolster cushions, so very comfortable to sit or stand at the helm. We've got a 
I don't think the wheel is adjustable actually, it's a fixed wheel, but there is a little charging pad under there for your phone, wireless charger. And then some handy glove boxes. We've got one here with the ignition. And then there is another one over on this side. Again, a bit bigger this one. You can pop your handheld VHF or sunglasses or bottles of water or whatever you want in there. And then twin screens. We've got Garmin screens on this one. Uh, obviously, you can set those up how you want, whether you want navigation or radar. This has got the standard rev counters. Again, you can upgrade those to multifunction uh, readouts that are sort of digital readouts, and then you can select what it is that you're actually seeing on them. And then there's the main control panel for the engines and lighting and all the other elements of the boat. But very well designed, nice and clear, looks modern and works really well. Throttles for the twin IPS drives, standard Volvo throttles. You've got the option to put it onto single lever control, cruise control, uh, trim assist. So it's got the automatic trim system. It's got those Volvo interceptors. So when you have that on automatic, it will instantly adjust the four and a half trim of the boat to make sure it's running at its most efficient. We've got a side power bow thruster. Again, just maneuvering around in the marina. And because we've got those steerable IPS pods under the boat, there is a joystick control for that too. And again, once you take control with the joystick, that will take care of the uh, gear engagement, whether it's in forward or reverse, and can steer the pods independently, which means that you can move the boat sideways, spin it on the spot, or drive it forward and backwards, much as you would on the throttles. But just makes parking the boat much easier. A hardtop is one of the options on board the boat. You can have a completely open boat, or this, which is the standard hardtop, and if you want to go one stage further, you can get an opening sunroof in this section here. So that would just open it up, and then you can have fresh air and sunlight coming through there, rather than this fixed, glossy GRP version. Now, one of the other key features of this boat is the way this windscreen wraps all the way around the cockpit area. Now, that provides really good protection when you're running at speed, particularly when you're sat down at the helm station, you are definitely protected from the oncoming breeze. If you stand up, you get a little bit of fresh air coming through that gap, but that works rather nicely. But this is what makes it so unique, because you've got the full width cockpit in the stern, but then at this point here, in order to get out onto the side decks, we've got these rather beautiful pantograph hinge doors. So if I unlock this, lift it up, the whole door swings out, locks into position on that side deck so it's nice and secure and then you've got access out onto the side deck and up to the foredeck area. Now you can see here we've got really good deep side decks they're nice and wide and they're well protected so these gunnels come up you can see just above knee height and then you've got grab rails along here so very easy to move up to the foredeck. And again, there's lots of features going on here. So one of the things they have done is they've kept this molding all the way round. So rather than having a break in here through into the seating area, they have kept it there mainly for design reasons, to be honest. It just looks nicer to have an unbroken line. But you do step over it, and then there's a really lovely seating area on the foredeck. So we've got comfortable seating here. There is storage underneath. You do have to lift the cushions in order to get them off, but you can see there are lifting lockers under both sides of that. There is a base here for a table and the table stores under this section here. You can see there's a table leg under there. So you can put the table in position here and then you've got a nice sociable seating area where you can sit in an evening, have a drink. You can sit on both sides. And then of course, this is also a sunbed. And I particularly like the fact that we've got lift up headrests for all of these sunbeds. So you can have them facing that way, makes it more comfortable to lie on and read a book. But we've got another rather cool feature about this. And first, I'm just going to pull out these little units here, which you might wonder what they're actually for. And I did for a while. But the reason for them is because if I step over in front of the sunbed here, there is a large button that I just lift and twist 
and then this whole section slides back like that, locks into place, and then there is a really big sun pad area stretching the full length of that foredeck. And those little supports under there just provide a bit more strength to that sunbed. The other thing about moving that forward is that it reveals another cushion right up here on the bow where you can sit down looking forward and enjoy a view over the bow right forward here. It's a rather lovely position. You're probably not going to be doing it when you're running along, but of an evening or if your moors turn to in a Mediterranean marina, what a lovely spot to sit and have a drink. And cleverly, they've managed to keep this really nice and open and empty. So all the mooring gear, other than the two main cleats themselves, are actually under these panels here. So if I lift this up, you can see starting to reveal itself is the anchor windlass. And that runs right through the hull there. There is another lift up panel there. We've got a mooring line on at the moment, but you can just see the stem of the anchor running through there. The windlass is there, and then under these panels here, you've got access to the chain locker. So all the chain stores away in there. You've got a handheld remote control for the anchor, so you can stand on the bow and look exactly what the anchor is doing as it comes up. But equally, when you want to use it as a place just to sit and have a drink, you can tuck it all away very neatly. Job done. The other thing I wanted to point out is that you'll notice all the way around this boat, these translucent lines in the deck. And those have LED lights set into them. So at night, you've got these beautiful underlit decks that light up, not only help you show you where, where you're going, you've also got lighting all the way around under these beds, but it just adds a kind of feature to the whole boat. So at night, it looks almost as cool as it does during the day. And there is even, under this seat here, a small locker. It's quite minimal, but if I lift it up, you can just see there is room for your lines under there. So you can put your fenders down with the anchor chain and your lines under this little locker here. And then exactly the same, side deck runs back down this side to another access door here, which again swings open, locks into place, and you've got access through this side as well. Now, because this is a fully open boat, you obviously can't keep the cockpit totally secure. There are covers that uh, wrap around here and go over the stern, but there is a proper lockable door leading down into the interior. So this slides across. It's quite a big, heavy molding, but it slides all the way across. There's a little latch there that holds it in place and then you drop down into the lower saloon. Now, what I really like about the way they've done this boat is that they've given a lot of space to this area because the thinking is that it's first and foremost a day boat, but what they don't want is this pokey little cabin down below that nobody wants to go into. So they've kept it really big, really tall and really light. So look at that, I can barely touch the roof up there. That's got to be seven foot up to that point. And then there's plenty of floor space here, a really deep sofa. You can see it's a proper lounger. It's not like a little narrow bench. It's a comfortable lounge sofa. And then there's windows all the way around here. So there's two different levels. We've got the hull windows themselves alongside here. Then there is big window in the superstructure and then up above me here is a magnificent skylight and it's that just means that the light pours in down here so it doesn't feel at all claustrophobic you've got light you've got space you've got comfortable seating and then over on the, this side is the galley and again it's not just some excuse for a galley it is a proper usable galley we've got storage under here we've got a really good sink with a lift up tap it's a proper generous size we've got a four burner induction hob with this rather neat little flip over uh, ventilator which will suck the smells away and even a little half width dishwasher over on this side there's even a full height fridge freezer and you can see there's a 
little latch there just to keep it secure when you're in a bit of a rough sea but we've got a decent sized fridge and a small freezer up top. Now the other thing to note when moving around this boat is they've used the Union Jack motif all around the boat so you'll see it in the gates as you come on in the back of the helm seats but this is my favourite of all. So the skylight up here you can see there are LED strips inset into that and that's on both sides so both when you're down underneath it and indeed from on top you get this Union Jack motif with the actual stripes in exactly the same place that they would be on the flag. So they're making the most of the fact that it is designed and built in Britain but fair play to them. It looks cool, it works well. There is a television on the bulkhead up this side. You'll find a television in the cabins too and a little movable stool. But then moving forward to the fore cabin. Now this is probably the principal cabin. It is marginally bigger than the one amidships, but there is good headroom in here. You've got just over probably about six foot four inches, I would say. Good size double bed. It is an island berth. There's not a huge amount of floorum around the bed, but the bed itself is a good size. And once again, we've got hull windows running the length of the hull, letting in plenty of natural light and a rather lovely view out. We've got a bit of storage. There is some storage lockers under the bed. We've got uh, a storage locker actually over here. There is a TV on the bulkhead here. And if we move around here, you can see there is a full height hanging locker in there. And most importantly of all, we have got an ensuite bathroom. And the reason that this is really the principal cabin is because the bathroom is that much bigger. Sink in the corner, loo down here, and most importantly of all, a separate shower compartment. So you can see, you step in there, full standing headroom again, and a proper door coming across it. So it's not a wet room, it is a proper bar or shower room, if you like, with a separate compartment. And there's even a little bit of storage under the basin there. The second cabin is amidships, which is effectively tucked under the cockpit. But there's a door leading in here, and then it drops down a bit as we move under the cockpit into a full beam mid cabin. So this does stretch all the way across. We've got hull windows on both sides again. We've got another good full size bed. The only difference really with this and the forward cabin is that you haven't got full standing headroom all the way around the bed. You can see there's a bit of a cutout in the floor down here. So there's plenty of headroom just here by the doorway. But then there's a step up either side of the bed and then there is a drop in the ceiling level too. So it's fine, you just need to sit down as you come around the side of the bed and once you're on the bed itself, there's plenty of sitting headroom above you. Now again, we've got storage either side of the bed. This is quite an unusual solution actually because we've got an open shelf on this side, but the actual door slides across. So now you've got an open shelf on this side. There aren't two separate uh, doors effectively, it's just the one that slides across. And then a bit more storage behind here. Again, either side of the bed at the moment, it's stuffed full of scatter cushions. See, people seem to be obsessed with scatter cushions on boats and no idea why. The other thing to notice is that there is quite a neat little opening porthole in the window itself. So you can get some fresh air into the cabin if you want to. As with the other one, we've got a television on the bulkhead here. So you can lie in bed and watch TV. And over on this side of the bed, there is access into the bathroom. Now, the difference really between the two cabins comes down to this, because this is a notably smaller bathroom. It's almost divided into two cubicles. There's this area here with the basin. Again, we've got some natural light from the hull window. And then the loo and the shower area is all in this same little compartment here. But what there isn't is a separate door. So effectively, it's more of a wet room. But really, that's about it. In terms of the sleeping space, they're very similar just as comfortable in both. It's just this slightly smaller bathroom that would tend to suggest the forward one is likely to be the owner's cabin.
To be honest, when I came here this morning, I was still slightly in two minds about this boat. On the one hand, I was absolutely delighted that finally there was a new Superhawk in the range after an absence of more than 10 years. But there was a little bit of me that still yearned for the Superhawk of old, those long, thin, high-performance boats. But now, having been out and driven it, I've managed to lay that ghost to rest. Because, yes, it may not be quite as fast or quite as dynamic as those boats of old, but they were so much smaller. And I've also come to realise that maybe it's a little bit selfish focusing quite so much on the driving experience, because it's only the person behind the helm that really gets to enjoy that. The rest of your guests are being shaken up at 45, 50 knots, not really having much fun at all. But what this boat manages to do is give you enough of the driver involvement and excitement to satisfy the person behind the helm. It will still do 30, 38 knots. It will do that in so much more comfort. And most of all, your guests will be enjoying themselves much, much more. You've got that fabulous open cockpit. You've got all those toys at the back to play with once you've arrived at your destination. And then you've got somewhere properly comfortable to sit down below or sleep over at night. So is it a true Superhawk? Yes and no. Not perhaps in terms of absolute last cutting edge performance, but there is enough there that for me, this is still a modern reinterpretation of what a Superhawk should be about. And I think Sunseeker have absolutely nailed that.